All right, I'm streaming, maybe. I don't think I've ever streamed on Windows for like a while, so I do have Windows. Who would have guessed? Uh, <laughs> so that's fun. Okay. I'm going to be playing Virtual Circuit Board. Got it yesterday, or technically today. Uh, this is a full adder I tried making. It works, it's just bad. This is like a failed version of it because I forgot that a full adder is two half adders and not a half adder and an XOR. Uh, so that's always fun. This was an attempt and I'm like, I don't like these connections. And so, yeah. Uh, overall, I probably should use a bus. Because um, really good for space savings, but I didn't, so fun, isn't it? Okay. So, this is a decoder that I made. Which looks good, I think. Uh, it's about as small as I could feasibly make it, I think, you know? Because placing it here would cause Reed to spill it, and placing it here would yeah, anyway, so I have to... I, I think this is about how small you can make this. I could be wrong. So we, we need a decoder for the CPU. I'm trying to get a thing to... Uh, work on the rising edge. And I have it. So this is like a toggle. And it, and it goes for two. Now, but I don't know how... I tell it to delay for two ticks. I have an idea, which is um, this. Are there shortcuts? Like, also, why does it say there's four reads? Like, I don't actually know what that's supposed to mean. There's one right. Components used to flow control. Okay, yeah. Okay, but I don't. Is there, like, what is the buffer for? Right? Because it seems like a buffer is kind of the same as a trace, except you can place trace, buffer, trace, buffer. Well, that's not a buffer. Buffer. So you can, you can do that, no problem. Um, so I don't, I don't know what the difference is. Uh, so, fun, isn't it? Like, if I place more, does it have a delay? I assume no. Yeah, but this is a rising edge, like monostable or whatever you want to call it. Um, I just realized why it's called a monostable circuit. Wow. Because it's only stable in one state where, uh, like this is two states that it's stable in. I'm actually dumb for not realizing that sooner. Wow. Okay. Well, now I, now I know. Uh, by the way, I didn't brush my hair or anything before starting. Uh, to be honest, I had school. Now I'm just having like the sh shittiest lazy weekend uh, that I can try to make. So keep that in mind. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna see maybe if I so if I hit S. I really hate some of these keybinds. I will be honest. Like I hate that I can't do like the Factorio thing where oh I'm not in blueprint mode. If I hit Control C, it puts me in there. Can drag and select and I'll be good, but this doesn't do that. You have to hit S and then do it, and then you have to hit A to go back. Uh, and, and I mean, you can manually click, but it's so much effort. And uh, I don't know if there's a way to... Yeah, so there's no... You can't use the keyboard to control a lot of things. It'd be very nice. Oh, oh, no, okay, you just have to be in this view. Okay. Is tab gonna... So tab is how you do that. Like, so it doesn't tell you that. Which is super annoying. I guess... Oh, what's this? Alright, I gotta know. I gotta know. I gotta know. 
What? Okay, this defines symbols. What does that do? Oh, I see. That's the opcode. So that just literally corresponds to how the CPU does that opcode. So however you do it, you set the hex to that. Oh, nice, good stuff. That is interesting. I wanna... Can I remove some of the... <gasps> what? Oh, oh, oh. Wait, wait, what? I gotta know, what is this doing? Wait, you can click these? What are these? Oh, 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 oh. I see, I see. But what is this? What am I hovering over? Filler. And that's just a latch that defaults off. And that... I don't know what this is doing. Oh, is this writing to the boss? Is this a boss? No, this is orange. But this goes out this way. And then there's a... What? What is happening? What is this? I don't actually understand what this does. Am I about to make some kind of music visualizer? There's a counter, so that's the program counter, I assume. Ah, so this is how you do delay. It looks really cool, actually. Is this how they're doing their Rising Edge Mana Stable? Weird way to do it, I mean, if you ask me. How does it know what to do here? Uh, and like, in what order to do it? Like, I wanna see. <laughs> Where does this happen? And if I turn this up, oh shit. Wow, that is fast. Okay, this is sick, like, actually. Wow. Really cool. I see why there was a seizure warning at the start of the game, though. How fast can I make this go without killing my computer? Oh, oh! <laughs> oh, what? Select a program. Okay, but like... Oh, that's awesome! What? Okay, that's so sick. Uh, primes. Primes selected, yeah. One is composite. Two is prime. Three is prime. Four is composite. Wait, why would one be composite? I'm not a mathematician, so I won't ask. Is it calculating this? Is it calculating the primes? Because, geez, okay, that, that sounds like it's going to take exponentially more computation. It does seem to be taking longer for each one. Because checking if numbers are prime is a slow process. Yeah, you can see it looping. Is there a monostable here, or does it, uh... I think there is a mana stable. If I slow it down to one instruction per second, it's going to take forever to calculate. Speed it up. That's really awesome. That is some awesome stuff. Someone not only took the time to make this game, but then took the time to build a computer, and th this is so cool. Honestly. This is some cool stuff. I pop out the chat, because... Oh, but it doesn't even do what I want. Awesome. Okay, well, there, I have the chat popped out.
Um, this is cool stuff. Doing a lot of calculations, you can see. Five million ticks per second. And it feels like it's nearly instant. <laughs> what? That's so ridiculous. So I see why it has this. Wow, that looks so crazy. Because it's faster than my frame rate. This is awesome. Now, if I fuck with this, can I get it to, like, skip a clock cycle? <laughs> this is so cool. So let's do count. Count is selected. Um, this is such a cool display. So it's... I don't understand how it works. If I'm gonna be honest, I don't understand this display. It, like, propagates? Is there a signal that does that? Like, is there a global signal that tells it shift? I think that's it right there. I wouldn't know, but I assume that tells it, hey, shift over. So cool. Yep, count is selected and it counts. It's quick stuff. You know, what's weird is it actually counts at like a very human readable speed. So I wonder if there's a timer. Inks. How do you get a virtual mem content? Like, where does that come in? Where do you get that? Can I, like, click and see what that is? Entities. There's a clock. There's no timer, though. That's cool. It is very fun stuff. Let's do fib. That gets uh, big pretty fast. You can see though, there's some bugginess with the shift register. Very interesting. So is this where the program memory is? Oh, okay, okay. So this is, I think, the CPU. And these are the different instructions, maybe? Oh, there's a VMEM settings right here. Oh! Persistent? This game is so sick. That is so awesome. This is a bunch of ands, and it's writing data in... Or, no, no, no. Writing data out. So, three... Why does it go across like this? What is the purpose of cutting across with these traces? I don't get it, actually. I shall wait. It shorts across. I think that's what this does. Shorts across. And so the signal comes from over here. Huge adders. I think this is the ALU. IR. So instruction register? Program counter... Wait, instruction register. Okay, so that stores the current instruction? Is that what that is? Is that what IR is? 
instruction register? I assume that's what that is. Program counter mem content. So is this the vmem? And no, that can't be the whole vmem. That wouldn't make sense. Mem address. Uh, call stack pointer. So that's a pointer to the. Okay, so it has a return statement. Is there a ret? Lots of chars. Is there a ret instruction? That'd be awesome. You can't control F in this. Garbage game, obviously. <laughs> um, is there a ret instruction? Yes! Oh my god, there is a ret instruction! So it does have a fucking call stack! Oh my god, that's awesome. And then, and then here's the stack for data. It's a data stack. But, so, I, I think I see. So this is a pointer to the start of the call stack, I think. This is a pointer to, you know what? Notes. No, that's not notes. Notes. Really? Oh, yeah, great notes, thanks. Uh, what is this bookmarking thing that he keeps going on? I don't get it. If you, if you haven't figured that one out yet. So what does that do? Oh, there's tons of comments. What is bookmark? This is the file specification. That's actually really interesting stuff, I think. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. So you can, like, I think they want you to make custom blueprint editors if you want to. Oh, shit, it dropped something. So, like, if you want to do, like, MC edit for this shit, go for it. <laughs> or, like, you want to convert circuits from one game into the other. So, like, if you have a circuit in Logisim, it'd be really sick, wouldn't it? you could write directly into a blueprint file by using the specification. That's fucking awesome! You have to make the converter, but they tell you what the file format is, so if you get the file format of Logisim, you're good to go! And you can do conversions like that. If you want, you could take uh, Minecraft NVT data, uh, and then say like you have a flat slice uh, made out of wool or something, you could uh, take the NVT data using like the uh, whatever Python NVT reader library you use, and convert it to this format, and that'd be awesome. Hell, I might even make a reader format for this game and upload it to PyPy, because that'd be so cool. Uh, if it hasn't been done already, like, this is so sick. Um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm like, gushing over how cool this is, but I, I don't understand how to completely use it, so... So it, it's very awesome, honestly. I don't know how to use the bookmarks, uh, so I won't worry about it, but, yeah. I don't know what this is. Oh, ticks to advance in step mode, that's awesome, so I can advance one million ticks at a time if I want. This is, this is ridiculously cool, I love this. So the symbol is true, false, one, end of string is negative one, that's a weird, um, end of string symbol. This is the Fibonacci button. 
I don't... Okay. See... It's a character, and then these are the characters that you can write into here. So it goes from 10 to 36, and it looks like it's just in order. So is there a decoder? Is this the decoder? Is this a decoder? No, this is an encoder. Right? Is this an encoder? No. Is it a, dec a is it a decoder? But this has two. What does this do? Did I accidentally erase some stuff, or is this... I haven't been in edit mode, so if I deleted this, I'd be surprised. This has been explicitly disconnected. This is old. That just wasn't cleaned up. Is this... What does this do? Are these like monostables? Counters, maybe? This thing is doing repetitive instruction, so it's really hard to tell. But it keeps this on. Is this state? What does this do, right? Like, that's not labeled. What does that do? I don't, I don't know. Okay, uh, let me... This is just gonna be a full adder, but I think... Well, it's a little experimenting, and, uh, we'll see. So this, if I'm not wrong, that's a few too many steps. EPS. Oh, TPS. Kind of extend this. Disconnect and reach now. Whoa, what? Huh? Weird. Okay. Well, anyway, I can um, get this to go for two ticks. Or that's really a delay. But what I can do, right, is if I get a latch off right here, go like this, and then I write from that, and I write to that, then that should work. So it'll write at the start, two seconds later, write again, which should toggle. Uh, and then I can, or no, 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 I want read, my bad. I keep forgetting. So I forget it's from the view of the component. So if I'm looking at this component, and I am this component, I say, okay, I want to write out from my contents versus read, if you're from the compu uh, component's point of view, it's I want to read from the contents of other things. Uh, it's really confusing to me, um, because sometimes I just use reverse terminology. Cool, so that did not work, because that, uh, okay, I, I know why that didn't work. Um, uh, simply, I have to do uh, this. Yep, so that's two ticks, I think. Should be like two or three. Yeah, that's three ticks, three ticks. So that's a three tick input, uh, right there. And so we can do whatever we want with that. Uh, there's a more compact way to do this, I'd assume. But that looks good. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that these traces have, like, instant transmission, uh, because they all get turned into one trace, uh, which is very cool, uh, because it compiles your circuit. It's not, um, it's not like a cellular automata. 
is a compiled circuit, which is really sick. Um, now, I don't know how to do this VMEM stuff, and I'm very curious uh, where you do that. So, oh, here we go, VMEM settings. Right? So the VMEM settings, what do I do here? Enable VMEM. So this, you don't have VMEM until you enable it, and is there a VMEM block? No. Okay, so... Where... <laughs> so it writes to an external file. That's very interesting. So you define the positions, x, y, where this happens. So let's let's like put some uh, bits down, and so that's. How do I uh, tell what position I'm looking at, you know? Here we go. So, 882779. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm stupid. Uh, 882779. Offset? Oh, that's cool. So you do that, and okay, it shows what it's doing. That's nice. XY size. There, very awesome. Um, and so that's four. So these are, oh, these are the address latches I've just set. So that's pretty cool. Um, if I hit S and I copy then I could say these over here, which is 906 to 779. So 906 to 779. And I set the offsets. Oh, because, okay, this is 8, so I want 4, uh, like I had earlier. And I I think that means there's too many address bits. No, no, that doesn't make any sense. What am I talking about? Um, anyway. I don't think I want to listen to this song. Eh, not that one either. Eh, 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 no. Eh, maybe, but not today. Yeah, that'll work. So this, this is, this is cool. So if I, so this is Virtual Assembly Editor. Uh, and this is going to be in the mem. Right? Can I edit the contents of this vmem vmem editor so all right just, just a hex editor so just type in okay so yeah i can do ff or no cuz okay so it lets you have maximum sizes so each of these would be 8 um so I really want to do this. So you could have um, 32? No. Yeah. 32. Uh, binary. Yeah, so here, this is the binary representation. Which I honestly find easier to read, because I'm a bit of a nerd. Uh, so there's hex and bin. It's, I know why they did that, uh, because 10 isn't a power of 2, so you can't just, like, have um, a base 10, because it's not going to map to the bits. Fair. Do I use hex, because it's like your next best bet, other than like base 8, and no one wants to use a base 8. So I guess if I run, this is, did I not save? Okay. 
I can change the address and scoot ahead one. I don't actually get it. How do I advance the VMEM? Oh, I'm I'm a fool. I'm a fool is what happened here. That's how I advanced the VMEM. It's locked. Okay. So there, that's really cool stuff. Uh, I don't know why it says it's locked. Okay, so there's a delay between uh, how quickly you can access the VMAM. It's like two ticks. That's interesting. Interesting stuff. So you could uh, read from memory too slow. Um, or too fast, my bad. Okay, this is really sick. Now, assembly. <laughs> Uh, what does this do, right? So, like, if I do uh, symbol test OXFF, uh, and I guess zero 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 out there, um, it would make sense. And then I I don't know. Um, so I don't. I don't exactly understand. Uh, like, if I go to the VMEM editor, yeah, it doesn't have anything significant here. Uh, if I go to the VMEM settings, this is some persistent memory. Um, okay, so it uses this VMEM and the VMEM addresses to. Um, how many content latches can I have? 32, that's what I thought. Um, so you can say, like, okay, from address E62F2 to some other one, that's our permanent memory, uh, and we just address it like it's our VMEM, and that makes sense. So technically you could say from zero to the maximum range of your computer, and hypothetically, that means you can have just completely persistent computer memory. Uh, you basically have a funny little hard drive. Um, which is cool. So, like, what you really could do is, I don't know if you can edit this while it's running, but while it's running you could say, you know, I want this persistent memory to be the whole memory range, and then stop the computer once it saved that memory to your persistent file and then when you load it again it'll basically load in the same state as it was before so that's pretty cool at least in my opinion um, this is very interesting honestly I don't know what this like does here but like, how do I, uh... Virtual display, though. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious. Palette. Okay. 30 pixels per VMEM address. Uh, color depth, and so I can have 24-bit RGB. That's very interesting. So if I... I'm just, like, super curious, um, sure, alright, uh, go to the virtual display, and then, Eight seven nine to six nine four. Oh, oh, that's cool. So 
we have ultra dense pixels and then we can say what memory addresses uh, will be what we want so oh it's 674 my bad oh hello so how does this work here Four. yeah there we go and then I can scale it so I'm very curious how this works so there's a palette and it's between these ranges which is very w oh no, no no I get it I get it I see why that is uh, because if I go to the VMAM editor here okay this is virtual circuit board it's a game on Steam I think it came out this year or last year I don't know um, basically like you can draw circuits like this like this here's a decoder um, this is like a weird monostable. I'm just messing around because I want to try to get a computer uh, and I need to kind of learn how this works. Um, here's a 4-bit adder um, that I made like last night. Uh, this is some failed attempts at that adder. So it's very interesting. I'm trying to learn about the virtual memory because it also has like an assembly editor, some really crazy features in it. That I'm super curious about, so I'm just trying to learn about them. So this is a virtual display, and so you can get um, some really cool stuff. So okay, search for edges. So I'm assuming these are RGB. Yeah, 24-bit RGB. Awesome. Direction. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. All right. So it's like an array. Uh, so hex makes the most sense for RGB, I think. So that'll be white, and then these will be crap. Uh, okay. There we go. Uh, I guess I can just copy whole lines then. Let's just see what that looks like. So I didn't do anything. I wonder what that is. So address. Oh, I. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. I think I think I get it. This address is not correct. Let's how many zeros is that? Five? Or sorry, four zeros and then one one there. Okay, well no, so that that should work then, huh? I wonder. Um wonder I wonder why that's happening. So these are all black. Does it not use LEDs? Does it use uh, does it use latches again? I wouldn't be surprised if it uses latches. Um, I wish I could turn off some of these decoration layers. Guess that's not happening. Am I not drawing anything? Is it is it not drawing? Is it because I've set my virtual display there? So if I... Here we go. Okay, so I was drawing the visible in edit mode thing. Makes it harder. Okay. So, simulate. So there's some latches. So how does this work? I guess... So the game has a tutorial. I should, I should just read that as a user guide. Uh, virtual devices, virtual display. Okay, LED component. So I had it right the first time. Uh, do I need to do something? Okay, color palette here. That's interesting. How does this... How does that work? Um, I'm a little confused. Um... Did I do this whole memory thing wrong? Because that should be white, black, white, black. Unless... No. No. Wait. Which one's the most significant bit and which one's the least significant? I really wonder. I don't get it. I 
think I think I actually have to put F's here. So I'll, I'll try it. No, I wonder why that is, huh? That is weird stuff. Display ready. Oh, wait, what does that mean? Do I have to power the display? I wonder if I have to power the display. Or, you know what, I should use a big button. Um... Do I need to do this? Display is not ready. I wonder why. Maybe I should go back to the user guide. Virtual inputs. What? I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. Build screens with a higher pixel density or color depth than possible using the LED component and all the circuitry required to drive them. Features eight indexed color modes to render images based on custom palette. Possible just okay. But but what does that mean? What how do I what how do I do the display ready thing? Like what does that mean? Okay, so wait, that was displaying black. That seems so wait, F F F F. Okay, wait, I think I did an oopsie, uh, and that is that these actually need to be zeros, maybe, because the thing is outside of its uh, allowed range. Whoops. Let's try it. Simulate. I wonder what the problem could be. This is uh, a little goofy. 32 ignored. What could the problem be? Highest 8 bits of the 32, but wh which, which is the, um, which one's the most significant bits? I guess I will never know. Oh, whoa, what? That's cool. Okay, well, for now, we won't worry about this whole virtual dis... Wait, what? Oh, I'm in edit mode. What am I drawing? Oh, read. Okay, I forgot I need to do this, though. Okay. Alright, um... For now, we're gonna delete that. And we'll delete this, and... Oh, yeah, because there's still the virtual memory. Uh, what I will do... Take all this knowledge, and we'll create a new file. And this will be a computer, hopefully. So the computer needs some like registers. I should have figured out how to build those first. Uh, so that's fun. But actually, you know what? Before we get started, I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. So let me put up a text thing. Text uh, BRB. Text uh, BRB. should be quick. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, hopefully.
Alright. I am back. So, what are we going to do first? Uh, we need registers. That won't be that hard, I assume. So, I can take these off latches, and we're going to need like A, B, uh, program counter, accumulator, some other shit. But for now, let's get like a basic design. Um, so first, I guess we just design like a single cell. Uh, so we need like uh, let's see. Yeah, something like that. Um, let me read from that. And we also read from that. But that'll interfere, so... Let's think about this. So it needs a side input. But really I want like two parallel inputs. Um, what if I... Man, now I'm confusing myself. I mean, I don't have to do them all in the same, but I like I kind of want to. And I guess there has to be a gap between these two. So I guess I need it to be like that wide. Whoops. I guess I need it to be that wide. Um, anyway, we can write in this case, uh, which should also take a clock signal, shouldn't it? So it should really be like a tri-state, or not tri-state, tri-input um, gate here. So. What if I... Alright, you know what? Do this. Put a read there. So that'll be our clock signal. Yeah, we can make that our clock. So let's let's have this be our clock signal, and what we'll do is we'll place a monostable here, so this should be like a latch off. Um a clock uh, and we can set the clock to let's say every 8 ticks no let's go every 10 ticks uh, and then we can write out from this uh, onto this signal here and we can read uh, and then we will write out to another read and then you know, let's just trace the read signals up here, put a buffer, which adds a little bit of delay. We write out from the buffer, and then we use that to read again. So that will hypothetically work. Uh, and we can take this and pipe it over to here. Um, or you know what, let's just do this. Uh, so that'll that'll work, I think. That should be a nice monostable. Uh, we can test it. It is. Let's let's do ten, or let's go twenty ticks per second. Nice monostable. Yep. Okay. There's a monostable circuit. Um. So. We have a monostable, and that's our clock signal going in. And so now we have two signals. And what we could do is we could place a bus going through here if we wanted. And I think that could be a good way to uh, minimize the size taken up by this. Because if the computer ends up being big, then we're going to have a bit of a problem trying to minimize that size. Um, so that should go this way. Uh, and now that we have this, we can take a bus. Yeah, bus. So this will go this way, and we'll just pipe that up. 
Uh, and so one of these will be our right signal. So we'll have a right signal be purple. And we'll have, so actually let's, let's also do the connection out just so that way we have it. Uh, and then our other signal will be white and that'll be our data signal, we'll say. So I'll place that like all the way up here and grab this. Uh, so then we just need one of these. Doesn't really matter how we draw it and a right there. I think this has to does this have to read? I think this has to read. So that would work. Um, then a few. Yeah. Let's take a look at the editing or no. Virtual circuits bus. Oh, the bus does not need reads. That's significantly better. So if this works, then that'll be our memory cell for, well, that'll be part of it. Um, we can simulate. So this is our uh, data, and that's our write. Or, you know what? I gotta think. Oh, how do we do this? This is just a latch. That... That changes things. I forgot to put a read. So that just toggles. I'm thinking, sorry. Uh, so this design won't work. That's that's for sure. Really, we need the memory cell. Um, and we say, like, if our clock and our so we'll make that our clock. Um, make that our clock. Uh, and if that is good, then that can write uh, with no issue. Um, realistically, we could move that closer, but that'll, yeah, that'll cause issues, so we can't do that. Um, so, we want to read, right? So this will be a, wanna re uh, we want to read from that? That's a reset signal. So if it's on and the clock is going, and we get the reset signal from here. I forgot to place the right block. Yep, that resets. Doesn't reset here, doesn't reset. 
permanently resets. So that's a reset. Um, and we can do some slightly goofy shit and bring our clock this way. Right? Um, or not our clock, our reset signal. So our reset signal can keep going, our clock signal will not. So let's maybe think about that. Let's say I place the clock signal going this way. Um, because I think that'll work better. So that's our clock. Uh, clock signal right there. And our reset. Now our set signal will need to say We'll need to say that if the clock is on, which I want the clock to actually be this color. So this is our reset, this is our clock. And I wish there was a text annotation tool. Doesn't seem there is. Okay, and then our data can be up here though. So we can have a read, and we can have a bus, and uh, some color. All right, so that'll that'll work. Now we need a read though. I forgot about read. We can put read out to the side here. So we want to write out. We need a read enable. Read enable can go along this way. Now read enable can be green. I think that makes sense. Uh, so there's our read enable. Uh, and that won't be that bad. And our read enable, I think we can put it directly out onto the bus. If not, we'll put a second bus. Um, so I, I hope that will work. Uh, I think I, I think I still do want to use a bus though. So a read enable. So if we're writing out from this thing to get the data, then let's have our data just, or I guess it'll be dependent on what we have. But or you know what? No, I need an AND gate like that. Um, and I need a, I need a read, and this, and this. So that'll cut across, read from this line here, and there's our and, and then we can write out from that, and that's our data signal. Uh, so, that might work is this whole system here so we'll test it because we have reset um, and a few other things because we're writing we would just want to reset because the data should be lost to begin with so we'll do we'll send it a quick reset pulse when we write uh, but that can be handled in the CPU um, so, I guess there should be a separate circuit to do that, but it'll all kind of be in the CPU to begin with, I think. So it'll it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Uh, so this, I guess, I'll make white, 
and for now I'll, uh, I'll draw these out this way. We'll do 8-bit, so I just need 8 colors, so that'll be red, orange, yellow, uh, other shade of yellow, whatever this is, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I need two more colors, this green, and this darker, more vibrant green. So that'll be that. Hit simulate. So there is our reset signal. This is our clock. Forgot, I need the clock to run this way too, but that, that'll be fine. Lock, reset, and it doesn't reset when there's no data in it, because the latch just takes a single tick to toggle its state. Um, so we only want to toggle the state if it's in an on position when we have the reset enable and the clock signal. Um, so so there is our data and our clock. Did I forget to run the clock? Because that's not our data. That's our uh, read enable. That's our read enable. Okay, that's read enable. I forgot about that. Our data, uh, what we need is I need to hit tab. And I just need a few right blocks. Okay, uh, simulate. So there's data. I don't want to put it on a reset. I want to hit our clock. I did not add a write enable. Knew I was forgetting something. Uh, but, well, there's data. Um, <laughs> Let's put the right enable up here. Okay. I think that makes the most sense. And I will just have it be black. Yeah, I think that'll work. Have a read enable. Simulate. Put data on there. Do not turn on the reset signal. Uh, turn on this signal. Uh, which is the read and then a clock. Wait. What? Whoops, that's why. Turn off that signal, turn on a data signal, turn this on, and hit a clock. That toggles. That's not good. 
Uh, I forgot one crucial thing is I don't want to do it if um, if it's on. So what I need to do is I need to have another a uh, bit of and logic, and what that'll be is a not coming out of this, and realistically. Need a little, just a little more, and I need a read, and a read. This is a bit of a, a bit of a cluster of bad circuitry, but so that'll read, and then I want to write, and then I want to. Read. <laughs> it works. It should, hypothetically. So we can write, assuming there's data and this. Shit. small problems that induces a delay so we created a monostable no no, no sorry uh, I don't even need this because if we do a reset then we don't have to worry about this. We don't have to worry about this logic at all because we're going to do a reset. Um, all you have to ensure that you do the reset, otherwise you're toggling bits. But who cares? Like the the extra time it takes to do the reset is minuscule. It's just an extra clock signal. Uh, but you could do it in the same clock signal if you want. Uh, it'll have to be done in the same clock signal, but. Basically, it'll do one signal after the other with a, a small delay. So, that would work. And that's what I think I'll do. So, you have to hit reset first. So, what I'll do is I will cut these, because these are bad. And this is our clock signal. That should work. That's our clock. That is part of a register. That goes straight out onto the bus. Now we want like a shared bus, uh, but our read enable kind of determines what we're even reading from. So each register will have its own read and write enables. Um, and I guess those will also be on the bus, but that'll probably be a separate bus. Uh, I, is there just general painting? <sighs> Edit colors. I didn't know that was a thing. Cool. Um... Try to listen to this. Let me think. Uh, okay, let's.
five, six, seven, eight. This actually looks somewhat similar to what I was seeing in that 32-bit uh, computer example that the game has, so doesn't look too too shabby. Um, save actually. Uh, Eight-bit computer. So well, that's what we'll do. For water. Okay, so we can't just use the white signal, uh, and we also have to extend this bus. So the next one we want is the red signal. Oops, I meant to hit Alt. Uh, and then orange, and then this orange, or I guess that's yellow, but then there's this light yellow. And there's shit. There's this green. And then there's this green. Wow, that is hard to tell. It's that green. It is very hard to see the difference between, but that is hypothetically one register um, that would work uh, pretty well it's one register but we need a copy of this register. Yeah, that'll work. You know what? This needs to move. These here? Doesn't need to move that far, but for now. Oh, no, 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 that didn't need to move. What am I talking about? This is going to share a bus, so these signals, a little useless actually, uh, and do this, and that. So that creates two of these, uh, and we'll need to shit. go like this, go like this, go like that. So that connects that bus without any issue. Uh, and we can hit S and we can go yep, like that. Move them a little closer. And that looks, that looks good. Um, so there are two sets of these. 
Um, but they each have their own clock, which is not good. We don't want them to have their own clock. What we want is to connect the clock signals. So what I will do is I'll take this clock signal and extend it down. Um, that that should work. Uh, that should take this clock and do that. We'll move the clock, uh, but this should work. Uh, so it, it does it on the rising edge of the clock. And I think we'll keep this rising edge monostable here, uh, just so it can kind of control itself. And we won't move it to the CPU, because if we want something to be on the falling edge, uh, then we will want to do some slightly different stuff, so. Um, sorry, thinking. That all looks fine. I guess it's I guess it's time to test this register. So it's doing the reset. And this is read enable. Okay, so this will not read apparently. Because there's no data, duh. That is reading. So we can set this data for this one. And. <laughs> Shit. Oh! It didn't. Uh... Why is the read enable not doing it? I don't want to listen to that. Uh, not that either. That's not horrible. It consumes the signal. Really? Oh, oh no, no, I'm just an idiot. That's that's what it is, is that I'm an idiot. I'm just stupid. That's what happened. I didn't put the signal on the bus. I should really just put it on the bus, but I won't. Refuse. Can't make me. That should connect the read enables. Save that. Simulate. So put in some garbage data, turn on the read enable, and nope, because of this little bastard and this little bastard. 
Turn it on. Garbage data. Turn this on. It has written the garbage data. I can turn these off. Shit. No, I can't. Wait, I didn't write anything. Oh, the reset signal's on, stupid! Duh! Right. There we go. If you don't turn off the... the data, you're good. Should've been obvious, really. Okay, so there's some data there, uh, and then I can place different data... here. Yeah, that's... correct. Uh, it looks good. And then I can turn these toggles off. And if I want, I can hit the read enable on this one. There's my data. Um, it doesn't follow the clock, but I feel like that's not going to be a big deal. And this. We did it! We have two registers! All right, that works. Um, I can take a screenshot of this to send to a friend of mine. Um, and uh, two registers. There. Okay. Sorry. What the hell? Message request? What is this? Uh, hi, I think you're an admin. I just got banned. I don't know why I got banned. So much. this person out, sorry. Unfortunately, I cannot do much to help you. I can try to help you get your ticket seen, but that doesn't come into any... Uh, shit, I always forget how to spell guarantees. Garan... Guarantees? Is that how you spell it? I have no idea. Um, that you will be unbanned. Let me look at the spell checking on Discord. It doesn't even know. Oh, I just have the U in the wrong spot in the word. I have it paired with the wrong A. That's stupid. I don't like that spelling. I don't like the real spelling. The real spelling's dumb and stupid. <laughs> um... It was the right move, so... Hopefully, it can help you with your fan appeal. Um, I would also make sure to collect as much evidence to your Innocence as you in I actually just forgot how to spell the word. It's so simple. It's in my head and I just It's gone. Oh wow, it is just as dumb of a Okay. There's no way that's how you spell that word. I, I have to check. That's stupid if it is. 
That is that how you spell that word? Why is English so goofy? Ugh. Sorry, every word looks dumb today. I usually just say these words out loud. Like, I don't usually type in this way. So, I usually type in as many dumb words as I can do. And I think it's just easier to understand and I'm not doing much. I'm using, like, Microsoft Word. And, uh, that does spell checking. So, I don't really... Yeah, it's, it's a good time. Good time. And my handwriting's so shit, it's just not worth writing by hand. It's not I might learn some spelling, but... My, like, if I write, you can't read it. I'm, like, competing with doctors for worst handwriting. Um... Yeah, make sure to collect as much evidence to your innocence as you can. Um... And to give the moderators as much context as possible towards uh, the situation should help them better assist you. Unfortunately, I am not a staff on the unturned side of things. I was brought on to help with a different project. Sorry. Uh, but I could not be of more help to you. Let me just reread that. Unfortunately, I cannot do much to help you. I can try to help you get your ticket seen, but that doesn't come with any guarantees that you will be unbanned or that staff will prioritize. Prior. Is it a tie or it ties? I think it's with an I. Uh, prioritize your ticket over others. Uh, opening a ticket was the right move. Hopefully, it can help with your ban appeal. I would also make sure to collect as much uh, evidence to your innocence as you can and give the moderators as much context as possible towards the situation. This should help them better assist you. Unfortunately, I am not staff on the unturned side of things. I was brought on to help with a different project. Sorry that I could not be of more help to you. Have a nice rest of your day. Cool. All right, that's, that's the message I'm sending. Um... Okay, um... Alright. Sorry about that, I had to deal with that. Didn't want to keep that person waiting too long. Alright, funny, goofy little monostable. So... Got a register and a register, so this could be like our A and B. Um Oh my back. Oh man. I don't want to listen to this song. Oh I might yo he can't believe it. Okay, um so anyway, these are the registers. Very cool. It's got a little clock signal going. Little mana stable here. So cool. Uh, some write enables a uh, reset signal. So actually, I should test the reset. Yep. And it resets. Six. So that has to happen right before writing data. And then there's a read enable. There's no data in here. And then read enable. There's data in here. Very sick. Um, so these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, right? Great choice. Uh, so I'm thinking I need a program counter like a like a stack uh like a, like a a stack address thing like a start of the stack um so I got to think really Uh, 
Um, sorry. So this is going to hold the data for the registers. But I think I need a second buffer. All right? This this will be the in and out buffer for the registers. Actually, no. This will stay the same. No, no it won't. Hold on. I'm trying to think. I'm just really bad at it. Can you do this? Oh, I am in simulate mode, so yeah, I can. This is really neat. See all the connected lines. Wait, but it doesn't work on this? Really? Wow, okay. It doesn't work on buses. Oh, but it does. Just not directly when you hover over the bus. That's, that's very weird. Oh. So the bus isn't a usual component. It works more like this, where like if you hover over this, it doesn't really show what it's connected to, because it's connected in multiple ways. But it basically says that this uh, green here and this green here have no gaps between them. Even if they do, it, the, it makes it think there's no gaps. That's cool. OK, I think that's how it works under the hood. Could be wrong. OK, funny little goofy registers. Uh, I'm gonna make these start is off for now because they're not connected to anything and I don't want the reset signal constantly going. But I do believe I need another register. I need several. Uh, I'm gonna need an accumulator and some other stuff. Uh, I think after this I will build the ALU and then maybe I'll start building some memory. Uh, and then I guess I have to pick an ISA. So that'll be fun. Um, I could have the stack start at zero zero, uh, and that could have some advantages because then I don't need a stack pointer. But I guess I need a pointer to like the next spot on the stack. I need a function return pointer. You could store it in a random memory address, and that that's fine. Um, but. Or, yeah, no, wait, you can just store that on the stack. You don't have to... Right, yeah, wait, hold on. I guess accessing the stack would be somewhat slow? I don't know. Uh, hit S here, and I will... Do this. Wait, whoops this button and there is another register quickly finished um, so let's have this be a B let's have this be the program counter so I will take this annotation and I'll take this tool I'll make a circle and do this. Let's see, and then let's do let's have program counter. What, what am I hearing? Right outside my door. No idea. I'm actually a little concerned about how this P looks. I don't know why. There. There's there's the program counter. Uh, I don't like this lettering. But it's fine. Um, I don't like. I don't want to listen to this. Eh, I could listen to this, but I won't for now. No, I don't even want that on my fucking thing anymore. 
I just recognized it. I'm like, oh shit, I'm never going to find that again if I don't hit the like button. <laughs> and then Spotify is like, oh, you, you hit the like button? You want to listen to that every day for the next 20 years, right? I hate that. It does that every time. No. No. I don't. What do I listen to? Eh, not a horrible song. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. Okay, there's our program counter, and then this this can be A. This can be B. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's that's perfect. Exactly what I want. So we're gonna need some control lines for these. Um, so. That'll be fun. I'll also... What happens if you use an AND on a bus? Like, I have to know. I guess you you can't, can you? Or, or can you? What does this read for mean? What does the for mean? Does that mean there's four articles? Because there's just as many on write as there is on read. What does that mean? I don't get it. I don't get it. I should also have a like a random register, shouldn't I? I feel like that's a good idea. Like just a, a, a specific place to get randomized data would be nice. Oh wait, someone texted me. Okay, sick. Um. So I don't know. It seems helpful. If you were to ask me. Because then, I mean, technically it's going to be a pseudo-random number generator, but we're going to pretend it's a real random number generator, because, yeah, totally. Uh, for now, I won't worry about it. So there's a PC, A, B. I'll need an accumulator. Trying to think, sorry. Hmm. Chrome counter A and B. So that's going to be our current instruction. I need an instruction register. That's what I need. Ah, okay. Right, 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 right. I need to... So basically the program counter is going to get... Uh, because it, the program counter is just going to contain an address. Um, and then we just go to that address. Um, and get the data. But if we need to get memory as part of an instruction, then... When we do that, we're not going to have access to the instruction anymore if we don't save it somewhere. So we need an instruction register. Alternatively, we make a... Uh, what do you call it? Like a separate spot for it um, that isn't connected to the virtual memory uh, that this game offers. So... Let me think. So let me... Hit the S button, and yeah, okay, I still have one of these saved. So 
So, did that just auto-connect? Um, yeah. Uh, looks good to me. So I'm just trying to think what I want to annotate these as now. This will be... I... Nope, oh, okay. I, R. And then this... will be A, this will be B. Cool, all right, good enough for annotating on uh, on my part here. So, instruction register, we'll need to read from something, but for now, we're not gonna worry about that. We're gonna build an ALU. I think the ALU will have its accumulator not with all these registers. I think it'll be separate. Despite it needing a register for the accumulator, uh, I won't really worry about it, so. Um, I gotta think. So, let's do it over here, and I'll move it over. So, we're gonna need a off here, and what this will do is this will be the rising edge, because we're, we are going to need to reset the register for storage. Uh, so, I can paste this in, right? Uh, can I rotate it? You can. Vertically flip. I assume this doesn't affect how the circuit works, but if I'm wrong, then catastrophic, horrible failure, but that'll be fine. Um, so there's our right enable, and this is like our toggle, right? So this is actually, we, we, this is perfect that this is here. Uh, and we will set this to do its thing. Here's our or okay, this is our clock, right? Yeah, that's our clock. Yes, that, that's our clock signal. But when this line comes active, we want to reset. Or I guess we also want to do it with the clock signal, so we will need an AND to even set this in the first place. Um, okay, and then we right to it uh, and then we want to take this right feed it back in like we did the last time so we need a read and a write and a buffer which adds a one pulse delay so if I add this here. So if a reset and a clock signal happens, then we want to do this on the rising edge, and the, the rest of the time we will uh, keep that read enable going. Um, so, if I tab to start, so there's our read enable, or write enable, sorry. Right? That's a, yeah, that's a write enable, and then a clock. What did I just put here? Oh, whoops, I forgot to put a right block here. So that does that, and that did not do with the monostable. Because I have... Right, 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 right. That didn't work, what, what happened, what happened? Unusual. Uh, 
Do I need another? Do I need more delay? Okay, don't with the delay. Or did I build it wrong? I'm not sure. This is weird. It's happening. Is it this? Yeah, that actually just wants to be a direct line to our reset. That needs to send a pulse, but it's not. What did I do here that's different? I take the output of this. It should work. Right? That should work. And with this signal, which writes and read, and that writes this way. Why would this happen? Why is it working differently? Is this actually... Wait... No, that uses a regular buffer. Does it need to be in a different read location? Is it really? So if it's connected to the same... It doesn't read into the latch. What do you mean? I don't know. Uh, I, I don't think that's... What happened? I, I, I don't think I need this two tick delay though. I think I just need a one tick delay. We'll just do that, I guess. It seems like if you have extra, it doesn't like that. Yeah, okay, that fixed it. So if these reads are connected, it doesn't like that. I don't know. I'm stupid! Oh! Oh, is that what we... Okay, it doesn't read into the latch because it's already on. It's not a pulse. And it's expecting a pulse because... That's my bad. Okay, I see. I see. Alright. That makes sense, actually. Um, okay, well, there's a little rising edge thing. And that should reset. So if there's uh, data and I hit the reset signal and a clock signal goes off, it'll reset, but it won't keep the reset on. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Thank you uh, for asking. Uh, how about yourself? Are you doing good or? Okay. Um, anyway, so what I'll want to do is the ALU is going to actually be down here. And so I will get a full adder going. So doing an adder last time was actually a little annoying uh, at trying to get the connections around each other. So hopefully I won't run into that again, but basically I need some AND gates, and I need to build a half adder. I think this will... or maybe I can do this. This might work. Um, sorry, I was trying to think about something. Uh, 
So if I write out, and then I place this here, and then I place some reads, uh, or okay, you know what, I do need to place these um, further away. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. That can go like this. Uh, I don't want to listen to this song. Or that one. Or that one. Or that one. Uh, I love Spotify. Great recommendation engine. Sure. Weezer. Why not? Right? <laughs> uh, okay. That'll work. Um, okay, I think I should be able to build it. I built one before, I just um, kind of in a different save. Uh, Alright. Let's see. So, I can have this be the top input and that be the bottom input. Really compact. That's good to know. Um, No, I don't think that'll work. Sorry, I was trying to think about something. Um, so that goes like that, and then I can take that out from there, and I can write out from this, uh, and then I need to basically do the same thing again, and I take this going this way, because that's one of the carry outs. Um, but if this, and then a carry in signal needs to come from like here, uh, so I can take all of that, um, and I'll take this XOR, and I'll have another AND, and I will take a read from here and here, uh, and I will do this. Um, whoops, I thought I, oh, I was hitting space instead of alt. Sure, that'll work. Um, take that there. Sh sure, why not, right? This'll work. This feels wrong, what am I doing? This doesn't look right. Write out from that. I can write out from that and that, and take this signal. And shit, I didn't think about that. Uh, that makes more sense. And then I guess an output symbol will be red or something. Sure, that's a full adder, kind of. It's a one bit adder blueprint. Okay, I think I have a one bit adder here now though, so I'll see if that works. Uh, I have no idea if what I did will work. That's good. That is not good. That's off, but... What have I done? What is getting cross-wired here? Something's miswired. What would that be, though? That's not supposed to be like that. Though. I don't think that would do it, though. Is putting a right next to... No, because then... No, but that, okay, wait. What is this all connected to? That, oh, 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 oh. Shit, didn't mean to do that. Sure, all right, there we go, let's see. Okay, there's our carry out, and now I just need to tile it, and test. Oh, whoops, it's in sim uh, simulate, there we go. Okay. 
test it. That carries. Does that carry again? Okay, cool. Full adder. So I just need to build a four, uh, uh, four bit adder. So then, oh, and then I'll also need another uh, half adder at the beginning to toggle. Um, oh, and I need a carry in signal as well. So if I have those toggles, I'll be able to do subtraction. Uh, and I guess we'll do software multiplication and exponentiation and whatnot and just deal with the slowness because I don't know how to build those circuits actually. Um, so. Okay, that's that. Uh, let's see. So that'll need to be rotated and moved around. It's easy subtraction. Yeah, yeah, subtraction isn't hard. Um, you can just get the two's complement and you'll be good to go. Um, so, actually, I don't want this up right now. Let me undock that. Okay, so what I'll do is delete all of these and then simply have. Uh, no, so this is per input. I need one of these. Uh, yes, I know there's an easier way. Okay, there. So those are that. And then I need a line for... That'll go in the right hand side. I forgot I need a, a read block. I can't just do what I'm doing right now. Forgot about that. Cool. And then I need a read block here as well, and I'll place a junction between them. Or I guess I won't need it there, but. Or, you know, I need. Wait, this is an 8-bit computer. Why am I building 4-bits? I got confused. V add 1. Alright. Uh, be back. You gotta eat. Okay. Uh, have fun, I guess. Um, let's see. So, this is supposed to actually be a 4-bit computer, so... And these will need to be direct from A and B, won't they? Or I either need that or to build additional registers. Decisions, decisions. Alternatively, I give this its own registers. I think that may be the better solution. In which case, I'll put it, like, here, and then the register's there. So there's our accumulator, and I'll annotate this AC. There's our accumulator. I realize I'm not putting that on the decoration layer. Um, do this. And then I need to match it up with the colors of this. So this one is white.
Right, this will work. And I should... So there's the A and B there. Those will be the inputs. These need to be red. Then this color. Then this one. Then this one. I'm listening to. Okay, that's a good band. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I want the sixth one. And then seven. One more. That should work. And then this here uh, is our carry in. So hypothetically, that's good. Um, okay. So there's the math bit of the AC, uh, the ALU. I was about to say the ACL. <laughs> uh, and I need a carry in signal. And the carrying signal's down here, so I guess I need to run that line up. And hey, look, there's a perfect little gap. Totally, definitely planned. I would always be planning, obviously. I'm great at, at planning. Just trust me. So there is our carry in. And I will uh, write this as. Shit. Oh, you can't. Oh, that's why these exist. So I can do a filler. for carry in. Do this, and I there, CI. Sure. Um, what I should do. There, CI. Um, there's our carrion up there. Uh, and now I need more registers. An A and a B. This will be the input. So the issue with these registers is that their input isn't separate from their output. They can be adapted. Let's 
work on adapting this. So over here, we'll work on adapting it. So it's not impossible to take this signal and isolate it. Take uh, this little bastard, copy it. Perfect. Uh, hit A, do this. That's the right signal. Wait, no, it's not. That's read. It's fine, it doesn't matter which one I'm doing, I just need to know which one I'm doing. It's the issue. This white is the reset line. Honestly, confusing myself at this point. Uh, <laughs> which one is which? This. This is right. This is the right enable. Okay. That's all I need to know. Buses are actually extremely annoying, who would have guessed? But, you know, making these circuits is more annoying. Like, like trying to isolate everything by hand would be worse. Okay, so there's our read. Um, and... Is that our read enable? That's our write enable, right there. So there's our write enable. We'll need an instruction to do this. Uh, and it'll read from the bus and just write in. Uh, and this will be just a register kind of specific to the ALU. So I will shit, hit S, and then I will flip and place this here. So this is our read signal, and I will have this one be A. So I'll say that's this side. The other one is B, which is this side. So A here will. Wait, whoops, need to go into the other mode. There. That should work. And then this signal here actually needs to go up and reach up where the accumulator is. So.
Um, let's see. That will need to happen. So that's all on the red signal right now, but we don't want that on the red signal. That should put all of that back on the bus. And this signal becomes the read enable. Yeah. That becomes the read enable. So when this needs to be written to, that turns into the write enable. Or, sorry, yeah. When the write enable's on for the accumulator, the read enable needs to be on for the registers that go into the ALU. Like, yeah. And. I guess before you do an add instruction, what will happen is, is two other instructions are called where you load A and load B uh, into the ALU. So it'll be like A, B, and so this AA and AB, I guess, will be the registers. Like a, uh, ALU, um, ALU A and ALU B. Because if we have a and B here. Uh, so, I guess, yeah, we'll do that. Sure. So, I need another one of these. B and B is interesting. B goes right here, and then it, it does good. Yeah, that looks about right, I'd say. Show us how big that gap is. Probably doesn't need to be that big. Oh, yeah, no, it does, because that's there. But actually, yeah, hypothetically, it doesn't need to be that large. So, whatever, that's fine. I'm not really too pressed about it. I'm thinking this should hypothetically work, but again, it's all hypothetical because I don't have a way to test. I guess I do, actually. Oh, and I, I need to connect this enable here. This little toggle. Is there a way to just automatically... Oh, shift A. Awesome, good to know. Uh, that sounds good to me. What am I listening to right now? I'm not really interested in it. Uh, and I don't want to listen to that either. That's not bad. I'll listen to that. That should all be good on that front there. 
So this is the right enable, which we need to take these signals and we have to move them. So I'll have one be black and one be white, just because those are like basically opposite colors. Uh, and I'll place a bus right here. So then I take a white signal and a black signal. Shit. Uh, I need to hit Alt and I'm not doing that. There. So there's the read and write enable on those. Uh, or sorry, that's the right enable. No. Wait. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, yes, this is this is good. It'll auto do the resets. I forgot. This is I, I made this do it. It should auto do those resets. Yeah, three likes. Awesome. Thank you for whoever did that. I don't know if you're still in the stream, but thank you. This, hypothetically, remember, should be a working ALU. We have a carry in, a right enable for the accumulator, and right enables for these. So, I'll hit simulate. I'll do one plus one, or sorry, one plus three will do. Can I hit this button? That's not the, <laughs> that's not the correct number. Um, <laughs> I wonder why that is actually. This is... I see. Take these, take this. Hit the mathy button. This should be the right enable. But it's not on when I did this. No, it is on. It's hard to see that it's on. And that's the correct answer. So the... The right enable. No, the clock signal. I didn't connect any of the clocks. That's bad. I'll connect the clocks, but here's our read. It should be writing. Oh, this is the clock. My bad. That was read. That's read enable. Okay, it takes single ticks. I forgot about that. 
it expects single ticks from the clock, so it's not going to work if you have longer than single ticks. But that did math. Incredible stuff. That did all the math. So if I tell it to do a more difficult equation, so that's 3 plus 3 is 6, so it should be this one and this one, and it's trying to write those, so if I quickly toggle the clock... Oh, oh, it didn't do the reset! Oh, oh, oh no! Why didn't it do the reset? Okay, what happened, what happened, what happened? It needs the clock to do the reset signal. Okay. Oh, okay, you're back. Awesome. Uh, I have a lot of it kind of working. I have two registers which will store the data, so that way you can kind of just send them one at a time. You don't have to have a giant bus. Maybe not the best idea, but it should work. Uh, and it's doing math, and it's doing it correctly, I think. It looks correct. I haven't tried the subtraction, but whatever. Um, it's, how do I describe it? It's, it's not, so it's not resetting correctly. Uh, can I press that? So it needs a clock signal to be on before it can do the reset is the issue. So this was redundant and I think it's causing issues. Actually, this whole... Is this whole rising edge going to be redundant? No, it, it wouldn't be. Um, but you know what should happen is this. Um, I need to basically just be... I need to wait for the clock signal to go before I try anything, I think. Simulate. I'll put some data in these. And I think these are backwards from how these are. Like, this is least significant bit, and then over here, because these are upside down, this is least significant bit, so... That's fun. But this one is... Oh, did I do something wrong? I think I inputted these in backwards, though, so then it, like, reverts back to this being the least significant bit. Playing GF, what are you talking about? Uh... What, what, what is GF? Shit, I will be right back.
sorry about that. Um, message retracted. Okay. Uh. Virtual Circuit Board. When you start playing Virtual Circuit Board? Uh, like last night. Uh, I did a bit of, like, Redstone and stuff, and I've played uh, Logic World, if you've ever seen that game. So, I'm not a complete noob, um, but not exactly an expert, because I don't do this often. I do a lot of programming and stuff, though, so I have, like, basic understanding of Logic. Uh, I'm making a programming language so I kind of understand some lower level stuff about memory, but, you know, still a little iffy. Uh, so, I just realized this, is this going to run into the same issue? Right, I was testing this, wasn't I? So there's that enable. Ah, wait, whoops, this needs to be a write. There needs to be a delay. That's what needs to happen. I need... Uh, I need a delay after, right? Uh, yes. So hopefully two ticks is going to be good. So I need toggle this, do this. Why would that not work? The timings just don't happen correctly. That's because these are getting the same delay. I need to hold it on. So this needs to have another one of these. Other mana stable. And this. This seems to just stay completely uh, normal. Shit, I'm going to hit A. There. Um. that so that whoops that's that clock symbol and wait why don't I just connect that line with the with the buffer what's wrong with me <laughs> is so dumb. I, th I think this still needs to be like this, but... Or I guess it doesn't, does it? For now, I'll keep it. So I need to read, write, buffer, another, oops, another write, do this. So it'll write out that way. 
I guess I could just do a read and a write together, right? No need for the buffer. So the buffer just adds the delay, doesn't it? And I don't want a delay. I'd like them to go at the same time. Yeah, whatever. Doing this will... <laughs> yep, alright, that makes sense, actually. I see why that would happen. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to try to... Well, I'm going to try moving it. It's turning this off. Oh, no, it's not. I'm just stupid. That does send a reset, and those lines do flash at the same time. That's perfect. Uh, now, I need to do this, and that should send some data when this is on. And on a clock tick, which needs to be a quick... What? Needs to be a quick toggle. Oh, oh, oh. This is going... No, it shouldn't propagate back. Because that would be bad. It is propagating back! That's... Is that a bug or did I cross wire somewhere that's not a bug so how do I do that without a without a buffer right cuz am I stupid or do I not understand how write and read work That... Is there an optimizer that's messing me up? Is there an optimizer that's saying, like, okay, well, these can just pretend to be connected? Because it is compiled, right? So... I, why would that connect them directly and not... I'm confused. Yeah, yeah, it should be synced. That's the reason I want to use it. Because I need this to be one way. I need a one way connection uh, for several reasons. I could move this over here and. Uh. Like, I don't want a delay. A delay would mess up the timings. Um, but that should act as a diode. Like, they have these here. Oh, that's really annoying, actually. I thought this would work like a diode. It's annoying that it doesn't. Fine, I guess, but... It still kind of sucks. I'll do this. That'll work. Wait, nope, that needs to be a right. I keep mixing up the read and the write, because I'm thinking about it from a different point of view than the component. Uh, okay. So I go toggle this on. 
This allows math to happen and sends the data through, but I do a clock pulse and nothing happened. I think it's because I have to... What? Huh? That's unusual. <laughs> that's, uh... That's the read enable. That's the clock pulse. <laughs> wrong wire. Just completely wrong wire. Shit, nope. I keep hitting the wrong buttons because I'm just not used to these keybinds yet. Alright. Put data in these. Do this. Uh, and then... Perfect! Yeah, yeah, I, I fixed that. Uh, it's, it's writing now. Uh, I was hitting the wrong... Man, how bad's the stream delay? I wonder. Um, it seems like it might be kind of bad. Alright, so that's, that's writing data, and it looks like the correct data. I just, these bits are kind of flippid and bad, so I don't... It also, flip it is totally the right term. Don't, uh, don't question that. Okay, so I can turn off this write enable, which is the write enable for this, which I also wired into the read enable for these registers to enable doing the math. Uh, so, if I hit read, it reads. Good stuff. Okay. And it reads out onto this same bus, so I can take that out from there, and it'll it'll be good. Um, so that'll be in the accumulator. Good stuff. Uh, and now if I hit this again, but I change what's in there. All right, it wrote zeros. Hit a clock cycle again. And it wrote new data, and it appears to be the correct data. That is 5, and this is 3 plus 2, so that's 5. Yep. Okay, it's just weird that the least significant bits and most significant bits are flipped, but it's fine. Probably. I should keep track of that, but I won't for now, because it should be fine, because... I'm just using color coding on these wires, so as long as I just color code the output however I want, it should be fine. And I keep them kind of in the correct order. Oh, wait, no, 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 because no, it will matter, it will matter, it will matter, because the carries. <laughs> right. No. Uh, what am I talking about? <laughs> okay. Uh, this is also missing quite a few operations. So this ALU needs a bit more. Um, trying to think. Not sure. Should probably just create a few instructions to do. Some stuff. You know, what? I need memory. I need memory. Uh, and I'll I'll work on that over here. Memory is relatively easy. Uh, some is okay. Yeah, right. Uh, sorry, I thought that was a new message. Um, so. I don't want to listen to that. Okay, sorry. That song's slightly better. Uh, I need these. So I can take like this, and I can do 8 bits. So I'm going to put some spacing here in case, but. Um, shit, I thought I. There. So. That is our input, and <laughs> okay. Um, shite.
I want this to be a register? And then I can do dereferencing and stuff if I do it that way, I think. I can, take, I, I can copy the contents of one register and move it into uh, another by just enabling the correct flags. Could. Matrix decoder. Am I thinking of the correct thing? Matrix decoder. This is going to be not what I think it is, but. <laughs> Alright, I, I don't even know. Um, ever tell you I'm a little dumb? Just a little? Or maybe a lot? Okay, uh, anyway, this will be the output of the mem, so I will. Uh, do something pretty simple, which is take the right thing here, tell it oh, vertical, go 8, and I want like, wait, oh no, 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 I want Y offsets now, right, oh whoops, perfect. And then I do this. So that'll that'll be the output of the memory, but I need to select the color. So this is That one, that one, you know, I should just, I made them all in order to make it easier for myself, so that's what I should do. I should just go through. And then I need to enable virtual memory, and then it is at 705.1281. So 705. Uh, that's the address latches. Uh, 705.1281. And the X offsets should be. And the size will be this. Wait, no, wait, whoops, whoops, whoops. Offsets will be two. I didn't know it took into account size. Uh, it, it's two decodes for a grid. You specify X and Y, and it uses that to select memory in a grid. Um, I'm stupid. Not sure why I'd need an X and a Y. So I'm not gonna do that. I'll I'll be. I don't I don't know why I'd want that for this case. Um. Not really sure if we're on the same page here. But which one is the least significant bit? I guess we'll never know. No, uh, let me edit the virtual memory. Can I not edit zero zero? Let me edit it. Bastard! Do I, do I have to be on a different... You can't edit zero, 0 I'm gonna be honest, it's a little weird in my opinion, but... Or, no, okay, that didn't change anything. I'm stupid. That... Never mind. Okay, we'll do... 1... And... Yeah, we'll, we'll just keep it at a 1, because we need to see which one is the least significant bit. 
so I forgot I need to specify this. So this is seven twelve twelve eighty one. for addressing. There we go. Simulate. Uh, that's the least significant bit. Which means I have these backwards. Unless I look at this, which is 1310. Um, it's thirteen ten, and I go negative four for the offsets. Wait, no, I want thirteen ten, and I do. Oh, you can't do negative there. It's good to know. So I have to. Move it up, or no, move it to 09. Yeah. Simulate. Cool, that's what I want. Um, so that I can edit the virtual memory like that. Uh, and. Oh shit. I need a write enable. I do this. I need another register. So but this register doesn't need a reset. No. Yes, it does. It's shit. I need two registers. This will be the data. This will be the address. Um, so I will address, and then this is mem. Okay, um... Guess that'll work, right? That makes sense, I think. And I do... Yeah, sure. <laughs> good, good stuff. And I might need to uh, mainly like basic math, storing data in memory, just really basic stuff. Um, there may be what I might do is assign some address. Uh, addresses in memory to be uh, like a virtual display and then you can write into those for displaying stuff. Um, so that's that's the goal. Uh, maybe doing some like looping and stuff, uh, conditional jumps if I can manage because otherwise it's kind of useless. Or it's not useless, it's just without conditional jumps it kind of sucks. So, I'll need some... C I haven't really built a computer before. Uh, I have a basic idea. There's a few things I don't know how to do. Uh, or things that, like, I've never done, but I might have a...
kind of guess. It's just not a great guess. Uh, okay, so... Hmm. For now. So that is supposed to be the right enable for this, but I don't want to do that, so. So what's about the, uh, okay, sorry, I thought you sent a new message. Um, so, it's part of this game is it feels like you're making a computer in MS Paint, it's very weird. It's interesting, but very weird. Or have you ever seen the, uh, there's a programming language, uh, called Pete, right? Uh, here's on the SLang's wiki. I don't want to listen to this song. Sorry, I have to change it. Uh, sure, why not? Weezer, again. Uh, alright. <laughs> so, you draw an image and it turns into code and here's the hello world program that's what this reminds me of it's so weird but very interesting um it's like pete but instead of software it's supposed to represent hardware which is kind of interesting um there's not a reason to read from this address so i'm not sure i want a read enable because that'll cause a bunch of problems because it's all virtual memory so I don't need to do that I could I guess write in some memory but with the limited space I don't want to do that because um, I'm pretty sure that take up like half of it because I would yeah it would it would be a pain I just basically need a shit ton of these registers I think uh, and then a huge decoder for the addresses or that's my guess at least um, could be wrong about that, but that's how I imagine it works. Um, so, let me think. This is the mem, so I need to edit this uh, virtual memory settings. So that is. Six five six. Uh, thirteen forty five. I'll have to figure out which one's the. So that's going to be the least significant bit, right? I think so. Oh, that's that's the address latch. Crap. I did it again, didn't I? There. the virtual memory stuff. This doesn't need a read enable. I think I should remove it, but I'm gonna keep it in case I'm being stupid, which is likely. And I don't remember what this is. I think this may be the read enable. Is this the right enable? Is this the read? That's the reset. This is the read enable. Um, so 
sorry, terrible at thinking. Well, terrible th at thinking and speaking at the same time, so trying to get better at it. I have a video, actually, yeah, that reminds me, I should probably say on stream, I have a video coming out about recursive descent parsers, I still have about an hour of footage left to edit for the first pass of editing, because uh, it was a three hour recording, because I didn't really prep anything beforehand, so I had to build the Lexer and AST in the same video, uh, and I don't want to completely gloss over it, so, uh, it's mainly supposed to be about parsers, but... I try to include a little bit more information, especially about the AST, because I think that's kind of important. Uh, because, at least when I first started making my programming language, is kind of what I got stuck on, is like, what do I do now that I have a lexer? Uh, what does a parser spit out? And I couldn't find any information for a while, so, you know, it's just kind of interesting. Anyway, I really should convert my programming language to use a recursive descent parser, but I don't, because I didn't know how to write parsers when I made that parser, and it works, and I don't want to mess with it. Although, I did take an idea from the parser I wrote on that video, which is write associativity for function calls, because I allow function calls to do some, have some weird syntax. Uh, so, having write associativity is nice. Uh, and so that's in the dev branch of my programming language. Okay. I guess this will work, right? This read enable, I think I'll cut off. But I'll keep the button. So what I'll do... Oh wait, I need a clock. Uh... Okay, there's a clock. So this is write enable, so that'll write into memory, that is reset. So... I'm going to, you know, I can manually do this, so that puts me, so that's the most significant bit right there. It's not good. Um, is that how it is here, too? So this one is white on this side. And is white my most significant or least significant bit? White is my most significant bit, so this is technically correct. Yay! So, if I write, yep, alright, it writes the bits in this virtual memory here. But that's not what I'm trying to test. What I'm trying to test is if I set. Uh, let, let's go to address one, and I turn on the write enable, and I set, so yep, that puts us there, um, and then I can uh, put like this checkerboard value here, um, oh right, uh, write enable for this, Turn off the right enable for that. That would have been bad. Hit the clock. There's it wrote into memory. Um, so then, let's see. Turn this off and hit the read enable. And yep, there's the output. But now, if I hit reset, do the clocks, so that takes back to after zero, hit the read enable, get exactly the expected value, but if I put in a uh, new value, like that, uh, hit the write enable, 
turn off that reset, do this, um, and then I turn these off. Okay, and I hit the read enable. Very good, and I should be able to hit reset and clock, and that resets the bits at that memory location. Okay. That is good. That works. Um, that's memory. And it's addressable. I guess now we need something to bring all of that together. So I need a place where all of those control lines connect to. So I gotta figure out how many control lines I have. Uh, okay. Oh, you know, I need a program counter. So... <laughs> That's, uh... Right. Right, right, right. Okay, I need another register that the instruction counter will save this address. Um, plug in its own, and then what will it do? I need a binary counter, first off. Uh, let me do some funny, goofy stuff, uh, which, when I say that, I mean just build a binary counter, which I believe looks something like this. There's one in the tutorial, so it's a little easier to figure that out. Or is this correct? Yeah. Type program counter works as this. Uh, a bit always checks if all the previous bits are set to zero at the same time. What? Huh? That was literally a uh, well. Oh, you know what? I needed to take the contents. I need a way to reset this. I need a way to reset the counter. To... Hold on, I'm being an idiot, aren't I? bits. What do you mean the one that I found can desync the bits? Oh, wait, what? Like, this binary counter?
I'm a little confused. The contents of these two should be connected. I think that's what I need to do. Could I combine the functionality of these? Or should I just... Hmm... Let's see. Um, trying to think. That's the right enable, so that's... Is there a way? Will that connect them? Yes, but uh, I done fucked up, apparently. <laughs> what did I do? Oh, what? Oh, it was enabling, I'm just stupid. Wait. connected anyway, so... Does that cause the problem? Hmm... Because I need the ability to not only read from the program counter, but write to it. And also do the counting. I don't want a full-blown adder for that. So... I think this would make sense. I'm not sure this is a... Uh... See, that enables. That doesn't enable. That's why. All I have to do is... that. Whoa. <gasps> what?! This whole time?! Sorry. You could just... You just hit Q? What are these? 
Wireless. Okay, so this is the wireless channels. It's weird, it changes color on. Oh, I see. That is very awesome. I did not know this was a thing. Keybinds. Incredible, truly. It's gonna look a little, a little ugly. They're not exactly lined up correctly. Okay, that is fine. Right, that... Or no, because there's a delay when it's like this. I think that's why that has to be that way. Right? Is that correct, or am I being an idiot? And then I need a monostable again to ensure that only one tick ever goes through. That'll directly write, though. So, you know, I don't want a clock here. This is going to be like a manual button press, because all of this has to happen in a certain order, and I'm not really ensuring that order right now. There's our clock signal. So... Okay, so shift. Okay. You guys see what we're talking about? It's counting two at a time. that happening but only for these two like an actual adder. Does it take longer for each? Okay. There's a delay between each. So your timing has to be, like, actually good. Okay, uh...
guess I really just need a bunch of half adders. So like this part. And then one actual adder here. Because overflow can't happen here if there's not a second input in that. This is interesting, to say the least. I don't know what I expected, um, but truly, who, who could have ever foreseen this? <laughs> no one, obviously. It's a completely novel problem. No one's ever made a computer before. Wait, no, I just need half adders and plug in the carry-in signal. Oh, no, 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 full adder, add one, so wait, but it only has one input, so, yeah, no, I just put the carry-in signal on, right? It, that sounds correct. You know, I guess I could just test it here, right? So if, if we get there, then we're good. Um, problem being... Wait, this was the wrong thing. I meant this. Do a carry-in. Do this. And if we get that, then we're good, which will be like there in the final. So. Well, we got this, but uh, not sure how this happened. I'm gonna assume I accidentally pressed that earlier. Unless. Is this the same color? No. Oh anyway, yeah, we got the correct signal. Um so yeah, we can just use half adders. So that should be easy to build. Let me just build a few half adders. I forget I keep hitting I keep forgetting I can hit Q. I want to let's do there we go. Oh, it's based on... okay. It's not based on what you click.
I should probably continue talking, because that would be helpful, but, uh, you know. I will not use my brain. That is not allowed here. Everyone knows that. This, yep. That's technically correct, yes. Or not just technically correct, it is correct. Uh, okay. Do a little funny copy paste. just started barking out of nowhere. Awesome. Love when they do that. Just scared the hell out of me. Sorry. How are they doing that? Hold on, I'll have to check in a second. Oh, wait. Nope. There. That's part of that. And we'll test again. to continue building that out, but that looks good. Do this. Do this. Looks good. So that'll be like the basis of the uh, program counter, and so it'll be a bit of a a bit of a pain to get the timings right on that, I think, because we'll need to... What we need to do? We'll need a place to save this, because when the input gets removed, we'll need to have the output saved. So we'll need a register here to save the output of this, and we'll just have the output ready to go at all times. Um, and uh, just thinking. So store it there. We'll reset the original program counter to zero, and then we'll store the data uh, that we got there in the other register. Okay. And then after every time we finish an instruction, we just tell it to store the value before we do that reset to uh, increase the program counter by one. Um, I think that would work. I should look at the guide and see if there's better ways to do what I'm trying to do. Assembly. Find a symbol. Okay.
what is... I'm really not sure what's supposed to be. There is a slight problem I didn't think about. The... So, if you've ever written a Chip 8 emulator, um, it doesn't just read one... Uh, like it doesn't just read from one address of memory, it reads from two. So you increment the program counter by two every time. Um, so... We could do that, not a problem, but... We increment... So, the reason I'm saying that is... Well, we say first four bytes... Should be... The opcode? And... I really need to write an ISA and just like get my head in the right space for this. What? Okay, symbol. We need a set a symbol set b set b uh, No. Uh can I do 0b? and do binary, because that's just going to be easier for me to understand. Is there a zero B? I'm going to assume there is. Yes, it looks like it. So we'll say these four. Oh, this causes problems. Is that... Is what I want to do possible? Can I change the assembly settings? Random viewer spike, interesting. Oh, okay, it's not that big of a viewer spike. It's okay. Uh, it should not be used. Why is that? Is it like just so you have a null pointer kind of thing? Because I think null pointer is typically zero zero. Uh, or well, okay, there's a lot more zeros than that, but uh, get my point. Uh, 
this means is my assembly if I do set a I do set a colon um, and then some other data but oh so I guess I can wait hold on Labels. Okay, there's labels. Okay, pointers. How does this work, though? I don't understand what the... Okay, maybe I should stop skim reading and actually read. Pointers are primitives for memory addresses. Due to the pointer's nature, a statement that defines it is both a directive and an instruction. A pointer can be defined with a numeric literal address. Or have one. Use repoint and unpoint to delimit its scope. What? Uh, okay, there's numerics. That looks good to me. What? I... I don't understand this pointer section. I use pointers in programming, I, but I don't get this. Oh, shit. I'm stupid. It's a store instruction. Okay, no, I'm dumb is is what happened. It's, it's a store instruction. But... What is this inline keyword though? Where where can I can I you know it's highlighted here? Can I do anything with that? No. Okay. Cool. Awesome. I am I stupid? Don't answer that. Okay, but it has a stack. Where does that where does that get stored, or is that just red top to bottom? But if you jump, what is this not affected by jumps? Is this removed at runtime, but during assembly it? I. All right, I. <laughs> I don't get that. Macros. Okay. Cannot be chained or nested. Alright, that's fair, honestly. So I'll need macros to do what I want better. So let's say, 
let's let's cut this in half here, and we'll say this side is the op code, and this will be zero zero. This will be zero one, and then I'll say there's a symbol and uh, the accumulator. Or let's just do ACC like this. Is It is There's a There's a few issues with uh, bitwise oaring for me. How long have I been streaming? Where's the four hours? I should stop. Uh, should stop streaming. Uh, but I don't know. So yeah, and I think my stream is like dying right now. All right, that's it for me. I'm trying to get this out assembly thing. So there's a, there's a problem with bitwise oaring in that I want each part of the instruction to be four bytes. Um, is that if I how do I explain? Um, wait, no, that won't work. So, if it's on the first part, right, where this instruction is, right, then I need the information about the symbol to be stored here. But if it's in the next byte, I need the information to be stored here. Basically, I need these, bit, uh, these what do you call them, a nibble or something, is, is the, what a 4-byte thing is called? Or, sorry, 4-bit thing, or half a byte. Each of those needs to swap, depending on the position. That was a few issues. I could try to automatically shift. Let's try macros again. Let's, let's check it out. Macro, the move macro. Can I? Oh, it was macros too. Okay. I think they're, uh, yeah, they have the same issue, I think. They have to do some automatic shifts. Left hand side shifted by four. And then left hand side anded and then ord. I have no idea if that'll work. Just, I'm hoping. Let's 
just call this L mask for left mask. register or something. Sixteen. If I can have eight bit values, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I think I'm done with the stream, though. Um, I will hopefully maybe update people on this, maybe like a community post. Uh, that video should come out at some point. It's taking a little longer than I want to edit. Just, I wanted a break, though, so, it, yeah. Haven't done any editing today, but, you know, I might. I don't know. I have school tomorrow, so it'll be interesting. Um... I'm realizing something. The way I'm doing this is not good. This doesn't make sense. What I need is, yeah, basically what these people do, I think. I need a mask. These are the same. What am I doing? So I can have a four bit op. Alright. And I can, uh, I can do a set a op. I know I just said I was going to. Uh, the stream is done. Sorry. I, I will get distracted and keep doing this if I don't end the stream now. Alright. See you later. I'm going to go. I will update you when that video is finished. I will update you with uh, stuff about the programming language, and maybe I'll update you with stuff about this. I don't know yet. Um, I have school. It makes things a lot more difficult. So, that's fun. It is my senior year, though. So, I will, I will graduate uh, in, like, eight months or so. I don't know. Um however long school is. Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I'm going to be doing stuff after school, and that's going to get a little bit busy, but I will have some free time. Uh, so, yeah. And I probably won't go to university or anything unless I, like, have to, so I will have a not insignificant amount of free time. So, that is it from me. I, I will hopefully update you with how things go, and if I get more free time to maybe do more YouTube channel updates, if not, join the Discord server in the description. You'll get more real-time updates from me, because I don't usually like to stream or do anything like that, because I usually get distracted doing that for like an hour, where I describe what I want to do, and I don't do it, because I end the stream an hour later after that. Um, it's just not enough time, especially if you're doing programming, to get a lot done. Um, so, 